The Chicago Council on Global Affairs turns 100 this year. It was created in 1922 amid isolationist sentiment in the U.S. following World War I. Since then, it has brought an international who's who of speakers to Chicago, everyone from Gorbachev to Thatcher to Obama, to discuss America's place and role in the world. And given recent events in Ukraine, the Council's role would seem as relevant now as it was 100 years ago in 1922. And joining us now with more are Richard Longworth, a distinguished fellow at the Council and formerly a longtime foreign correspondent for the Chicago Tribune and United Press International. Longworth is also the author of the book, Chicago and the World, 100 Years of the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. And Evo Dalder, president of the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Dalder was U.S. ambassador to NATO from 2009 to 2013. Welcome both of you back to Chicago tonight. Uh, Evo Dalder, you have a major event with some notable speakers on Thursday to celebrate the centennial. Uh, tell us what's on tap. Yeah, it's really a big event. And, you know, it's our first in big in-person event since, uh, since the, the COVID Pandemics shut us down back uh, two years ago, almost to the day. We have former President uh, Barack Obama with us and uh, uh, world famous cellist Yo Yo Ma. Uh, we'll see who's going to play and who's going to talk foreign, uh, foreign and, and, and global affairs, but <laughs> we're going to have a really wonderful evening together with uh, a lot of luminaries from the city and beyond. Uh, to hear what these two very special people have to say about where the world is today and where we're going. In, in a crucial time right now, a lot to talk about. Richard Longworth, 1922, the council was founded. As we mentioned, America is in an isolationist moment, especially the Midwest. So what were the council's early aims? The council's early aims were pretty much just to bring information from overseas to uh, people in Chicago who wanted to hear it. It was felt that there was no other um, real source of information on things that were going on in the world. And there was a terrific amount going on in the world just then. We'd just come off World War I. Bolsheviks had just taken over the Soviet Union. Um, Nehru, uh, um, excuse me, Gandhi had begun his work in uh, India and Mussolini was rising to power in Italy. There was a lot going on out there, but the Midwest was largely isolated from this. And the founders of the council felt that people, there were people in Chicago who wanted an in-depth understanding of the world and how it connected to Chicago. So they set up the council. And that isolationist sentiment kind of carried through the beginning of World War II until Pearl Harbor. So how did the council adapt to the changing situation leading up to the U.S.'s involvement in World War II? With great activity. It was one of the most dramatic times in the council's history. <clears throat> um, in the 30s, as it became apparent that there was going to be another war in Europe, the big question was, is it our war? Do we get involved in it, or is this just something that's the Europeans' problems? Is this uh, something that we as a democracy have a stake in, or are we best to stay out of it? And there was, as you said, a terrific uh, isolationist uh, feeling, in, uh, especially in the Midwest and especially in Chicago, uh, run then by... Uh, or uh, pushed by the publisher of the Chicago Tribune, uh, Colonel McCormick. The council officially did not take a side. The council officially is nonpartisan. And actually, our programs that time featured speakers from both sides, including a couple of out and out Nazis. But council leaders, including Adlai Stevenson, uh, who was then president of the council, later governor of Illinois and Democratic uh, nominee for president, uh, led the campaign in the Middle West to send aid to the Allies, to the British, to the French, to help them stand up against uh, uh, the Nazis. Terribly controversial at that time. It, the, the, the activities really stretched the Council's nonpartisanship almost to the breaking point. But in the process, the Council, through its programs, uh, some of them attracting two, three, four thousand 4,000 people. It's broadcast, reaching 200,000 people around the Midwest. These activities really prepared the, the Midwest for going into World War II. So council members, uh, officially nonpartisan as part of the council, but uh, obviously preferring engagement. Uh, Evo Dalder, do we see parallels right now? We see existentially a battle between authoritarianism and, and democracy and freedom in Europe uh, and a tenuous situation that does have ramifications for the U.S. There are parallels uh, uh, to this moment in history. 
Yeah, there absolutely are parallels. In some ways, uh, the world, certainly in Europe, looks very much like the 1930s. We have a major power uh, that has decided to uh, to use force in order to change boundaries and in some ways to uh, usurp another country because, uh, as, as President uh, Vladimir Putin said, uh, Ukraine really isn't uh, a country. It's really part of Russia and needs to be part of Russia. And, and we even see parallels in, in trying to unite uh, a certain uh, group of people, in this case, Russian-speaking uh, people, uh, under the, a similar umbrella, just as the Nazis were trying to bring back the, uh, the Germans under uh, its, own, uh, its own wing. So those are the parallels in terms of the threat. Uh, in, in terms of the response, however, there's a big difference. Remember that in the 1930s, uh, very few countries uh, were willing to engage in the war. Of course, France and, and Britain declared war on Germany after uh, Poland was attacked. Uh, but for the rest, countries in Europe wanted to remain neutral. And of course, the United States, uh, as Dick just said, uh, was uh, wanted to stay out of the war. Now we see the world united. We see the United States, its allies in, in Europe, and indeed even allies in countries uh, in, in Asia and around the world, uh, not only condemning what the Russians uh, have done, uh, but moving uh, to act swiftly, both to help the Ukrainians with military and other uh, forms of assistance and to isolate the Russians economically and politically. We see countries like Singapore uh, and Switzerland normally on the sidelines wanting to stay out of any conflict, siding with uh, uh, the uh, the Western countries against Russia, with the people of Ukraine. Uh, and that is a big difference. It's also one of the reasons why, despite all the horrific uh, images we're seeing coming out of Ukraine, I do think in the end, uh, Vladimir Putin will have miscalculated and this will end Certainly. in a way that... Uh, we wanted to see it. Council played a role in this, if I may say so, in uh, its programming after World War II, in the formation of NATO, in the Marshall Plan, in spreading the idea that we had a permanent role to play in Europe and that the alliance was really important to us. Uh, the, the Council helped lay the groundwork for what we see now in this rather um, amazing cooperation among the allies. Right. You, you had George Marshall speak, talking about the Marshall Plan. You've had people, as we mentioned, Gorbachev, Thatcher, Robert McNamara, talking about the, uh, the, the mistakes in Vietnam. Richard, over the years, any of these uh, moments that really stand out to you? I think the, um, probably the speech by George Marshall when he came out here to speak about the Marshall Plan, um, very controversial at the time. Uh, this was not exactly a sure thing that the Marshall Plan would be adopted. So uh, Marshall came out here, chose the council as his platform to speak to the Midwest, to build up uh, uh, support for the Marshall Plan. Uh, when Jawaharlal Nehru, the prime minister of um, India, came here uh, shortly after the war, talking about the role of nationalism in world affairs and especially in Asia, I think that was a very important thing. Uh, Henry Kissinger came several times to talk about American foreign policy. <clears throat> um, we had a wonderful debate uh, during the Vietnam War between Zbigniew Brzezinski, who was all in favor of a very active and aggressive American foreign policy, and the University of Chicago scholar, Hans Morgenthau, <clears throat> who was more on the side of restraint, talking about how far the United States should be involved in the world. Was every battle our battle? Were we the world's policemen or not? This The, the intellectual quality of these uh, speeches um, still resonates today. And these debates uh, still had at the Chicago Council and bringing all these leaders to Chicago so Chicagoans can be a part of these debates. Uh, congratulations to both of you on the centennial and our thanks to Richard Longworth and Evo Dalder for being here. Thank you. Thank you.